Wow. I almost I, I almost hate to cut off that to cut off that song. That is a that's a banger. That's a that's a bomb track from my buddy Jaxius. Wow. How's everybody doing tonight? Am I coming through loud and clear? Uh, this song is called Hack'em Slash'em from Jaxius. Ah, hymns are beautiful. Thank you for becoming a channel member. And well, okay, you're hanging out in Demon's Outhouse. Be careful out there. I hear it. I hear it's kind of smelly out there in Demon's Outhouse. So be careful out there. Hymns are beautiful. But thank you for thank you for becoming a channel member. Appreciate that. Let's see who else have I got with me here tonight. We got Johnny. What's up, Johnny? How you doing, sir? Hope you're doing well. Got RJ Scott Inky. Got CJM. Got DJ. We got Astro Juicy over on Twitch. Got Usu. Got Dark Dark Hawk Mark. Wow. <clears throat> Dark Hawk Mark. Dream Emulator is here. What's up, man? How are you doing? Shannon, how are you? El Chewy Gringo, how are you doing tonight? Andy Shoemake, how you doing, sir? We've got Directed Screenwriter here. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Kevin Kruger, how are you? Return of the Disc, how you doing? George, sup? We got Geriatric Geek here with us. What's up, man? How are you doing tonight? How's everything out in Vegas? Caleb Croft, how are you? Punisher Batman fan, what's cracking? Eli, how you doing, Eli? Got Rick here with us, Mikhara, Richard Stange. Got Witch Hunter here, Charlie Varick. Got Dave here, got Redbeard here. There's Eddie. Jason, what's up? My buddy Swaggy's here. How you doing tonight, man? Go Seek Find is here. How are you, Go Seek Find? <clears throat> Uh, Fright Night Media, how you doing? Eric, how you doing, Eric? Hope you're doing well. So, yeah, hope everybody's had a good weekend. Hope everybody's Sunday has been good. So, today we're going to be talking about Anchor Bay. And uh, Anchor Bay is apparently is apparently back, but we'll talk about that. I want to talk about Anchor Bay's significance. <clears throat> uh, talk about some of their fav some of my favorite releases of theirs. I've pulled a bunch of stuff off the shelves that we can talk about. If you have any particular uh, favorite. Uh, Anchor Bay releases, please let me know. Share those in the comments. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it's all about Anchor Bay tonight. All about Anchor Bay. And any questions or whatever you guys, uh, you guys want to talk about. <clears throat> Uh, Piz, I love Anchor. I love that Anchor Bay is back. I remember buying great DVD releases early on, such as Halloween and even the Incredible Hulk TV series, TV movies. Oh yeah, yeah. How was Mad Monster Party? How was Mad Monster Party this year? Let's hope they will give us the the Sleepaway Camp trilogy on 4K. I don't. Maybe. Tomorrow's President's Day. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's, I mean, let's talk about, um, 
what's brought on all this Anchor Bay uh, nostalgia all of a sudden. I've got an article here from Deadline. Um, probably not going to, I'm not going to, not go, what just happened? There we go. I'm not going to go over every single word of it. But basically the gist of it is Anchor Bay is back, at least in name. Anchor Bay Entertainment label gets revitalized. Sets Abruptio and Dinner with Leatherface as first releases. So these are the two gentlemen who have resurrected Anchor Bay. And there's the new logo. <laughs> Uh, you've got the ship there with the, the pirate logo, uh, the skull and crossbones, whatever. But uh, Umbrellic Entertainment co-founders bringing back Anchor Bay with an eye on genre films, undiscovered treasures, cult classics, and remastered catalog releases. So that's what... And then they give us a little rundown of you know the history of... Uh, a brief rundown of the history of, of Anchor Bay. But, um, yeah, their first two releases, Abruptio, I've never heard of Abruptio, and a documentary about Gunnar Hansen, Dinner with Leatherface. I mean, that's kind of cool. I'm interested in seeing that. Um, if anybody's seen Abruptio, let me know. I have never heard of it, but those are going to be their first two releases. Um, but I think it's important to understand that even though they're anchor Bay in name, um, you know, the, the movies that anchor Bay released back in the day in the late, the late nineties and early two thousands, they no longer have those rights. This is a whole new, a whole new thing, brand new company, just with a familiar name, and they're gonna be um, they're gonna be looking to release similar films to those that Anchor Bay, the original Anchor Bay, did back in the day. So, uh, I'm uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see what they'll be putting out there. You know. Um, they are one of many, of course, boutique labels out there that are fighting for uh, fighting for space on collectors' shelves. So, if you want the full, um, you want to read the full article, I will copy the link here and post that in the chat. There it is on YouTube. And let me see, where's my Twitch chat? <clears throat> there it is on Twitch. So if you want to read up on that, there you go. But I think I pretty much gave you, uh, gave you the gist of uh, what's happening at the new Anchor Bay. And, you know, hopefully there will be um, you know, there'll be, there'll be other releases coming down the pike from, uh, from this new anchor bay. So anchor bay is back. Anchor bay is back. But you know, whenever I talk about anchor bay or I hear somebody talking about anchor bay, it just, it, so many nostalgic memories come back to me. Like I have so many vivid memories of going to Sam Goody. Okay, Sam Goody. Um, <laughs> back in the late '90s and early 2000s, there was a place called Sam Goody, where you could go and buy physical media like movies and CDs, and they had figures and posters, and they had a little bit of everything. Um, Sam Goody, of course, is no longer around, but um, I just remember. Of course, being in the horror section and seeing so many movies, so many DVDs and VHSs 
with this little clipper ship on the spine. And if it was a movie that Anchor Bay was releasing, it had to be good. It had to be good. So to put it into context for everybody who may not have been around when Anchor Bay was in their heyday, Anchor Bay in their heyday was Scream Factory, Arrow, Vinegar Syndrome, Severin, Synapse, Second Sight, all of the boutique labels that we all know today in one. That was Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay, you really can't overstate what Anchor Bay did for the horror genre and for physical media. Anchor Bay, I don't even want to say crawled. Anchor Bay sauntered so that companies like Scream Factory and Arrow and Vinegar Syndrome could run. Um, so let me show you, let me, oh, let, okay. So let's take a look at this here. Anchor Bay really, they were the first company to introduce like the special edition or like the limited edition, like home video release or physical media release. And this isn't the first Anchor Bay VHS that I owned. It was actually Deep Red, Dario Argento's Deep Red. I, 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 I don't know what happened to it. I've not seen it in years. I don't know. I also had the Dawn of the Dead one. Don't know whatever happened to it either. But this is the Dario Argento <laughs> VHS collector's edition from Anchor Bay. And what Anchor Bay did with their VHSs, of course, they came in these hard cases and they had these little flat parts on the bottom so that you could you could present them like this on your shelf <laughs> that was a first um having a vhs that had special features on it that was a first now granted that you had to go all the way to the end <laughs> of the vhs to the, to the end of the tape for those extras of course but there were extras on a VHS tape, making ofs, interviews, that kind of thing. Anchor Bay did that. So Anchor Bay created uh, the collector's market for physical media. And, um, and somebody mentioned another company that was around at the time. There were other companies around at the time. There was like Media Blasters. And I think there was one other. So, but, I mean, they were nowhere near on the level of Anchor Bay. It wasn't even close. So, Anchor Bay created the, what, what we common, we're so, I mean, like, at this point now, we just expect, you know, the big genre titles, when they have a new release or an updated release, they're going to be a special edition or a limited edition, or, you know, they're going to come with, you know, all sorts of different accoutrements and what have you. Anchor Bay started that. Um, and, you know, their releases for movies like Halloween, Dawn of the Dead, Evil Dead, etc. You know the 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 classic horror movies. In my opinion, solidified those movies in their classic status because, I mean, up to that point, you, those movies were out there. They were on VHS. Anchor Bay came along, and they put them on VHS too, but they gave them this kind of treatment on VHS. And, of course, there were many, many DVD releases for Halloween, especially Evil Dead. Um, 
and Dawn of the Dead and, and several others, the big classics that they had under their, their roof. And really solidified those movies, I think, as classics. And to, to fans like me, as like must-own classics. Um, and Anchor Bay, you know, we think about movies like Sleepaway Camp and Mad Men and Prom Night. We all know those titles. You know, most of us consider them classics. But Anchor Bay, like nobody was talking about those movies in the late 2000s or in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, the releases that Anchor Bay gave to those movies and the kind of care that they put in them with the special features and the limited editions and what have you really brought a second life to those movies. Really revitalize them um so again the the impact that anchor bay had on the genre just in general they call me reggie the reckless um the impact they had on you know collectors like me or wannabe collectors back in the day when i was broke i was at i was at sam goody pouring over the horror section and seeing all these, you know, anchor Bay titles for, and, and a lot of them for movies I'd never even heard of, but just because they were an anchor Bay title again, they had to be good. I wanted to see them. I, if anchor Bay's putting it out, it's gotta be good. But also for those classic horror movies, it solidified them as classics. And it revitalized, you know, movies that we consider classics today. Again, nobody was talking about Sleepaway Camp in the late 90s, early 2000s. Nobody was talking about Mad Men. <clears throat> Orc, thank you, sir. Channel member for 18 months. Appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate that a lot. Uh... Maybe we'll get a new Dawn of the Dead release from Anchor Bay. I, don't, may, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let me catch up with the chat here. Uh, you've got that zombie VHS too? Yeah. I, 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 wish, I wish I still had the Deep Red one because that, that was how I saw Deep Red for the very first time was on that Anchor Bay VHS. <laughs> And I really wish I had, because I had both the Day of the Dead one and the Dawn of the Dead one, and they each had special features at the end. You know, I wish I, I wish I still had those two, and maybe I do somewhere. I don't know, but oh yeah, I listen. We're, we're, I've got a stack of Anchor Bay titles here from my collection that I'm going to go over here shortly. Hey, there's Dan in the chat. What's up, Dan? What were, what were some of your favorite Anchor Bay releases back in the day, Dan? They brought widescreen to VHS. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. 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 They did. They did. When I, when I did my bloodstream with William Lustig, we talked about uh, Anchor Bay back in the day. I don't remember it word for word, but if you didn't see that bloodstream I had with William Lustig a couple of years ago, you should definitely check that out. That was um, that was a pretty epic stream. That was like a four hour stream or something, as I recall. At least no, it was like I think it was three, three and a half maybe. But we 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 spent some time talking about Anchor Bay. That's for sure. Still have your orange VHS for Halloween? Like, I remember one of the very first times I'd ever been to a mall, a real mall. Um, I saw the Halloween Anchor Bay VHS that had the, the snow globe inside of it. I wanted that thing so bad, so bad. Occasionally, I'll jump on eBay 
to see if anybody's selling one of those. <laughs> and what's funny is like most of the ones I come across on eBay, like the, the water is like half gone in them. <laughs> like the water, they're so old, like the water is like evaporated or leaked out. But occasionally you'll find, I'll find one like it, it, the water's still in the thing or even more rare is like that bundle with the VHS and the, uh, the snow globe still in its original packaging. And those are pretty expensive, but yeah, one day I'll splurge and, um, and get one of those. I wanted one of those so bad. Oh, by the way, if you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so Anchor Bay, so what happened with Anchor Bay is kind of the same thing that is happening with Scream Factory now, where they kind of ran out of titles to release, and they just started to release the same stuff over and over again. Like, it was a running joke for the longest time about how many times Anchor Bay had released Evil Dead. That has to be the title that they released the most. It was like every every year we had a new Evil Dead release. And they would give it some kind of, you know, the boomstick edition or the groovy edition or the this edition or the that edition. And they'd be like, you know, and a br and brand new special features. And like the, the one brand new special feature would be like an interview with, you know, the auto mechanic that fixed the car so that they could get to the location in Tennessee or something like that. <laughs> they just kept releasing the same stuff over and over again. And people just kind of, you know, they were done and they sold out to the stars company. And I think the stars company, they, they did some releases for like, you know, the Hellraiser movies and, and evil dead and stuff like that, like anniversary releases, but they wanted to produce their own original movies and that didn't quite take off. And then, you know, it just kind of anchor Bay just kind of disappeared. Uh, let's see here. The Suspiria DVD set with the lobby cards was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. I remember that one. I didn't own that one, but I remember it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right, Charlie. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, reversible sleeves. <laughs> that was a first, too. Thank you, Anchor Bay. Reversible sleeves. And, and thank you, Charlie, for reminding me. Yep. So <laughs> everything that Arrow and all these companies are doing today, again, Anchor Bay sauntered. They strutted. So that Scream Factory and Arrow and all these boutique labels today can run or walk or whatever. <clears throat> Catch up with the chat here. Sorry, sorry. Manhunter director's cuts. <clears throat> Andy's excited. I like Castle Freak. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I like Castle Freak. What's up, Tristan? Twisted Trucker. Oh, you've got the snow globe unopened. Very nice. You were a teenager when that snow globe VHS came out. Yeah. I mean, I, I pretty much, I mean, I pretty much was too, or, or, or very, very close. Uh, <laughs> Michael broke off in your snow globe and is floating around. That's funny. Oh, goodness. 
Yeah, listen, I, I I've got some tins here. We're gonna I, we're gonna I'm gonna show off my tins here momentarily too. <clears throat> That's true beyond Sour Grounds. That's true. Bill Lustig and Michael Felcher left Anchor Bay to focus on their own companies. So, yeah. Yeah. Those, those were big factors as well. Yes. bring out the tens <laughs> in time calm down in time in time be patient be patient be patient <clears throat> um but something else that anchor bay did that was really groundbreaking and, and i talked to william lustig about this during the bloodstream was they pretty much single-handedly introduced horror fans of the West to Italian horror. I, I, I was holding one just a little while ago, Nightmare City. <laughs> but predominantly the work of Dario Argento and Lucio Fulci. Um, like I said before, the, the first time I saw Deep Red, it was on their VHS. The first time I saw Suspiria, I think that was on their VHS too. Um, the first time I saw Zombie, there it is. <laughs> that was the first time I saw Zombie. Um, you know, we horror fans today. I mean, we're so you know, Giallo. We you, you say Giallo, people know what a Giallo is. In the late '90s and early 2000s. Giallo, what's that? Dario Argento, who's that? You know, Anchor Bay made their movies available. And because they were Anchor Bay releases, and because Anchor Bay had such brand recognition and, and, brand, and trust in their brand from the consumer, people just bought it blind. You know, I, I imagine blind buying Suspiria or Deep Red or Zombie and having no idea what you're getting into and just popping those in the VCR or the DVD player and just, you know, that was, that was what Anchor Bay did. Um, and again, I mean, like those names are just, Every horror fan pretty much knows Dario Argento. They know Lucio Fulci. They've seen Deep Red, Tenebrae, Inferno, Phenomena, uh, Opera. But back in the day, that wasn't the case, you know? Anchor Bay. Again, I mean, we, we owe that to Anchor Bay. Uh, most of the stuff, yeah, I do. Most of the stuff I do. Ah, Sydney from Quebec. Hope you're doing well. First time I ever saw Suspiria, or Zombie 2, and even the George Romero films. And Evil Dead films, Anchor Bay DVDs, yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And even like, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I was fortunate to have a video store in my area that was, that had a prodigious horror section because the guy who owned the store was a big horror fan. And, but, but even he, like, he didn't have a VHS of Inferno back there. He didn't have a VHS of Nightmare City back there. <laughs> you know what I mean? He had the VHS of 
opera. It was called terror at the opera, but you know, so Italian horror was not like, like it is today, you know, anchor Bay raised the awareness for the giallo and, you know, just Italian exploitation cinema in general. <clears throat> hey, there's Garrett in the chat. I blind bought Suspiria from Best Buy, Anchor Bay Big Box Limited DVD. Oh, yeah. Yep. Eric, exact, perfect. Yes, they were the criterion for horror. I, very well said. Very well said. 100%. Yes. Very well said. The stream's hitting the nostalgia hard. <laughs> I listen, just the all this Anchor Bay talk of late has hit my nostalgia really, really hard. But again, I I, I don't I, I can't stress enough just how much Anchor Bay did for the horror genre, for horror fans and collectors. And, you know, for, for Italian horror and for some, you know, the lesser known horror movies that we now consider classics, you know, and even the classics, you know, I think they're, they're even more classic because of Anchor Bay, because Anchor Bay just, you know, gave them such great releases and in some instances, multiple releases. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, a a Anchor Bay, <laughs> Anchor Bay also, I mean, they, they created, I think, the collector's market, but they also, you know, they created that, that FOMO, that double dip, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> even though they, they, they put out a million different Evil Dead releases, I owned probably half of them at least. <clears throat> Had the gray VHS for Evil Dead. Same here, man. That's how I pretty much, yep. Yeah. That's how I pretty much learned about him too. A lot of loitering though. No buying. <laughs> no buying. Just loitering. Oh, that's cool, Derek. They had a dedicated anchor base section. Wow. Very nice. Boutique labels, as we know, would not be a thing if not for anchor. Exactly. I agree. 100%. 100%. The Divimax releases. Oh, yeah, I've got some of those. We'll be going over those here shortly, too. I had a bunch of those. Anchor Bay helped build my... Summer Breeze, Agent to Know, Jasmine, oh. Pretty good. Sing... Pretty good. Pretty good. Kids got kids got some lugs on him. Anchor Bay helped build my love for horror and also collecting back in the late nineties, two thousands. Yep, absolutely. Uh hymns are beautiful. Thank you for the five dollar super chat. I appreciate that. Memorial Valley Massacre was amazing. Great late great late eighties feel to it. Thanks for the recommendation in your video. Ah, oh, you're very welcome. Glad you liked it. Thank you very much. So, yeah, um, but like I was saying before, I think the, 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 the end of Anchor Bay, it, it was when William Lustig left. It was when Michael Felsher left, um, they sold out to stars, but even before then you kind of got the sense that they had run out of, 
things to release and they were just releasing the same things over and over again, kind of like what we're seeing with, with Scream Factory today. And um, they just kind of lost, I don't know, they, they lost that, that luster. And um, they didn't seem to go once, once, especially once they did that shift to, to, to stars, it's like they just stopped trying to acquire new horror titles. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was, uh, and, and when they just kind of, and they just kind of disappeared too, as I recall, there wasn't like any kind of, you know, hoopla over, you know, their end. It was just, they just disappeared. But now they're back, at least in name, in name, at least with two new releases. So we'll see what happens with those. We'll see what happens. And I don't know. Can they, do you think that, I mean, the, the landscape is so different nowadays, you know, back in the day, Anchor Bay was definitely a, a not a big fish in a small pond. They were the great white in a small pond. Now those roles are reversed. Now you've got Arrow and Scream Factory and Vinegar Syndrome and Severin and Synapse and Second Sight and Terror Vision and uh, all these different companies. Can Anchor Bay compete today? I don't know. What do y'all think? Let me know. I'm going to grab some of my favorite... Um, Anchor Bay titles here and share with you fine folks. I've already shown <laughs> Nightmare City. I grabbed this one just for the the classic logo on the spine, but this is a great movie. If you've not seen Nightmare City, you should. <coughs> oh, goodness. Sing it again for us real quick. Summer breeze, aging <laughs> to no. Jasmine, oh. Pretty good. Sing it. Hymns are beautiful. Thank you for the additional $2. Thank you. Will you buy Anaconda Walmart exclusive? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not the world's biggest Anaconda fan. It's a fun movie, but... um. I, I own it. I don't know if I own it on Blu-ray or not. But, I don't know. Maybe. Um, so, th <laughs> so this is a, this is a pretty famous Scream Factory release because um, they actually had to pull it. And they had to do a redesign of the cover after they got sued or they, they received a cease and desist from the American Red Cross. This is the Sleepaway Camp Survival Kit box set. And um, <laughs> this is one of the original ones with the, the Red Cross on it before they had to um, pull it. And I forget, what did they what did they use here instead? Was it just a bloody handprint or something? I don't remember. But they had to re they had to replace the Red Cross with something. I don't remember what it was at the, at this point. Um, but what was cool about this set was it included an exclusive fourth disc with production footage of Sleepaway Camp for the Survivor, the um, the unfinished Sleepaway Camp Four. Um, <laughs> but I grabbed this thing as quick as I possibly could. Cause I love the sleepaway camp movies and I thought it looked awesome. And of course to see the footage from sleepaway camp four. And then I heard that it got pulled <laughs> because of the red cross. So what did, let me see, what did, what did they replace that image with? I said the same thing in a vid piss. Scream Factory feels a lot like the Anchor Bay in many ways. Yeah. 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 Anchor Bay. 
And I mean, a, another parallel between Anchor Bay and Scream Factory. Um, both Jeff Nelson and um, uh, Cliff. Um, I forget his name, his last name. The basically the guys who ran Scream Factory for all these years are both gone from the company. They both left the company. Cliff uh, McMillan was that it? They're both gone. So kind of like how when William Lustig and Felsher left, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Scream Factory because. I mean, Cliff and Jeff were, they were Scream Factory for all these years. So. See, I don't, I, I don't remember. Sing it again for us real quick. Summer breeze, aging to know. Jasmine, oh. Pretty good. Sing it. But there's even a little red cross on the back there. <laughs> but I, I I love how like it opens like it's a first aid kit. Then you had the movies. And of course the discs or the cases, white cases. Great touch. Great touch. And the survivor. There it is. The bonus fourth disc. Then you've got a little, little booklet, camp diary. Oh goodness gracious! I've not I've not opened this thing up in years. So, holy cannoli! Reversible sleeve? No, not reversible sleeves. But do you guys remember when DVDs came with these little cards inside with the chapters? <laughs> they don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore. But yeah, there you go. The infamous Scream Factory survival kits with the, the red cross on it. <laughs> oh, goodness. <sighs> hymns are beautiful thank you for the additional two dollars what about the i know what you did last summer steelbook from walmart um i i don't know maybe i'm i you know i don't i don't dislike that movie um i don't know i guess it depends on the price what the extras are I, I'm I'm pro I, I'm more I would be more prone to buying that than the the Anaconda release. A bloody handprint, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Haircut looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder just out of. Just out of curiosity, let's jump on eBay real quick here. And let's see how much the Sleepaway Camp survival kit goes for. The original. Holy Lord. Now, here's one at a decent price. Oh, they, they replaced the... Um, they replaced the... The Red Cross with just bloody red lettering that says survival kit. So like here's one for three hundred bucks, here's one for four hundred bucks. <laughs> but then like you scroll down a little bit, here's one for eighty four bucks. So like <laughs> wide variety of uh, price. Oh, here's one for five hundred bucks. It's got a bunch of signatures on it. Cool. 500 bucks jeez these prices vary wildly like goodness gracious oh goodness 
All right, here's another good one. <clears throat> Actually, I did a, a short video the other day talking about my Evil Dead 2 Book of the Dead and how it's kind of drying out and flaking away. The same thing happened to my uh, Evil Dead 1 Book of the Dead. It completely disintegrated. So I went and I bought another one. Now this one, I've, I've owned this one for a couple of years. I kept it in its packaging. Uh, but there's the Evil Dead 1 Book of the Dead. One of the many Anchor Bay Evil Dead releases. Um, one of the many, many Anchor Bay evil dead releases so i've had this one for like i said at least a couple of years maybe i don't know three years at this point and um, it's held up pretty well so hopefully it'll it'll last it'll last a while but my evil dead 2 back there's not looking too good and the original one of these i had <laughs> just completely it's turned to dust, but one of the cooler Evil Dead Anchor Bay releases, I think, the Book of the Dead. Really cool. Does anybody? Oh, oh. Does anybody remember the Halloween thirtieth anniversary commemorative set with the Myers mask? inside anybody remember this now mine is one of the few like most collectors who i see most collectors that i've seen who own one of these like the mask is all yellow and kind of nasty looking i don't know if they just like touched it a lot <laughs> but mine is still looking pretty good mine's not yellowed very much at all uh, I also notice a lot of aware on the nose, like the nose on mines held up pretty good too. There's the back. Mine is number 17,853 of 20,000. And of course this set, oh, you've got, of course you got John Carpenter there on the spine, got that going on on the other spine. Got Lori there on the top. You got that going on on the bottom. Opens up like so. Got all that going on inside. <clears throat> and you've got one of these thick cases. <clears throat> you got Halloween on Blu-ray. This might have been one of the first Halloween Blu-ray releases actually classic dvd release the tv cut of halloween halloween 25 years of terror documentary and of course halloween four and five so this was a very cool release from anchor bay anybody else own on the, if, if you own this one, let me know how your mask is holding up there. <coughs> uh, I did a review of Megan is Missing a few years ago, Shannon. Go check that out. Slash your home video, Chris. How you doing, man? Hope you're doing good. What's up, Sean Sr.? <laughs> Let's do some text-to-speech on this one. Johnny Recaps says, This is why I hang out here, Piz. You're beaming talking about this stuff the way an actual horror fan should. Well, thank you. Thank you. It, 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 it brings back a lot of... It brings back a lot of good memories. So... Thank you, sir. Ah, Cody, how you doing tonight, my friend? Yeah, if you've not dropped a like on the stream, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Oh, 
Uh, yes, it is. Very much. Oh, you oh you've got this still sealed. Nice. Okay, all right. Yours is holding up pretty well. All right, good, good, good. Good. How's how's your masks? How's the how's the one how's the mask in yours that's sealed up looking? Chris. Still looking good? All right, since we're since we're talking about it, I'm going to jump on eBay again and see about that Halloween VHS with the What what was that one called? Was that a 20th anniversary? Uh Oh, here it is. Yeah, 20 it was a 20th anniversary. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, wow. This one. Okay. Okay. This one looks pretty good. Oh, wow. Oh, good. Oh, goodness. The, oh, it's, it's a little beaten up though. It's a little beaten up. It's a little beaten up. Uh, you know what? I don't know. Let me, eh. All right. Let's add it. Let's add that one to the watch list. That's a maybe on that one. But that was the 20th anniversary. Wow. And that was, I mean, that was like, what, 20 years ago by now? Uh, or, or longer. Holy crap. Hey, vey. Time flies. Time flies. Uh, Anchor Bay gives us the feels, definitely. Yeah, for sure. It sits in there funny, though, and I have to open it and fix that. <laughs> it's funny. You've got one too, Art. Mask is still in good shape. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, so let's look at oh, let's look at this one for a second. So this used to go for a pretty penny back in the day. Well, not all that long ago, but the uh, the Dawn of the Dead Anchor Bay Blu-ray. For the longest time, this was the only blu-ray release for the movie before um the the second sight 4k the big fancy that set and of course it was out of print so this one went for a pretty penny for it, it maybe it still does i don't know let's look it up here since we're since we're on ebay let's look it up Let's see. Uh, <laughs> those prices look like they've, well, there's, there's a couple on there. Eh, there's some on here that are, you know, the price has come down, <laughs> put it that way. Still, I mean, it's still, you know, you know, you can get a, get a nice little steak dinner out of it if you sold it. Right. So. Um, yes, exactly. When 1080p was beyond high definition. So this was a big one for a long time. Let's look at, oh, this, oh, this was a classic. I saw somebody bring this one up in the uh, chat not long ago. The Dawn of the Dead Ultimate Edition. And this was a this was a big deal back in the day. Oh, and and R.I.P. Flyboy. I know I know I did we I did a Flyboy shout out not long ago, but um, you know the very first face I opened this up is Flyboy staring back at me. 
But this is like a big four disc fold out thing. <clears throat> All fancy pants. Uh, got the U.S. theatrical cut, the extended version, the European version, and documentaries. So, this was a big deal when it came out. Anybody else got the, still got the Ultimate Edition in their collection? Looks like Beyond Sour Grounds does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Johnny's got it. Yeah, but this was a big deal. This was a big deal. Uh, here was a great release for Day of the Dead. Divi Max. I love how this one opens. You just pull on Bub there. You got Dr. Tongue inside. You've got the Mad Doctor there. <clears throat> This was a really nice release. And, and little things like this, you know, like the, the, the doctor's journal, you know what I mean? Just cool little, cool little things like that. But this was a great release. This is still a great release for Day of the Dead. I mean, like, look at all those extras on there. Yeah, really, really great release for Day of the Dead. And of course, Divimax. I mean, come on. Top of the line stuff. Uh, let's see if there's any. Oh, okay. All right. More Halloween goodness. The Halloween with the, the lenticular. And this one's, <laughs> this one's seen bad. This one's very old, as you can see. It's taken some bumps. But this was a big fancy release back in the day for Halloween. And Anchor Bay, they put out a many, many, many releases for Halloween 4 and 5. These are the Divimax special editions. I've got the just the standard DVD ones they did somewhere. I don't know where. But I found these, so I grabbed these. I also loved Anchor Bay because they did stuff like this. <clears throat> the Fright Packs. Like these are just cool. Like there's six movies in here. You got Dead Heat, Let, See Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, Hell of the Living Dead. City of the Living Dead, Nightmare City, and The House by the Cemetery. Like, that's six bangers. Look at that. And this one's still sealed. Got Rats, Zoltan, The Cat of Nine Tails, Slugs, The Black Cat, and Parasite. And still sealed. It's got, it's got a manuf well, it says, doesn't have a manufacturer's date, but it's got a date died on date. 05, 9 Yeah, these were just fun little things. <clears throat> and then, of course, the tins. The tins. We've seen steel books. We've seen um, steel packs. 
but tens, you know, tens, nobody's done tens since Anchor Bay. Can we get up to 75 likes? Let's get up to 75 likes and then I'll whip out the tens. Love Slugs and Zoltan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anchor Bay were way ahead of their time. These boutique labels were heavily influenced by some of the rad shit AB was doing back in the day. Exactly. 100%. But they, nobody's ever touched tens that I'm aware of since then. So, <clears throat> all right, let's see. 66. Come on, let's get to 75. 75 likes, then we'll break out some tens. <clears throat> Did any, who's got, who's, who's a, who owns tens here? Who's got Anchor Bay tens? And which ones do you have? Let me know. <clears throat> Uh, love the beyond 10 10 are still sealed. Cool. Still got my sealed Halloween 14. Cool. Evil dead two ten, 10 Halloween four and five 10 wicker man came in a wooden case. Okay. That's cool. Hellraiser, The Beyond, Halloween 4 and 5. Nice, nice. <clears throat> By the way, if y'all missed my bloodstream with um, Brad LeRae, that's up on the channel now. That was a really fun bloodstream with him. Um, and I'm, I'm working on a couple of more bloodstreams. Uh, well, actually, three more blood streams. So hopefully, I'll be able to announce at least one of those pretty soon. Uh, Halloween four and five ten. Oh, you've got all of them except for let sleeping. Oh, wow. Okay. Evil Dead two ten. Maniac in the Beyond. Cool. Oh, 82 likes. Thank y'all for 82 likes. I appreciate that. So let's look at some tens. <clears throat> First one. Maniac. Beautiful ten. This is number 2,644 out of 5,000. And I wonder... Since this security thing is still on the back here, did somebody steal this one? Was this one stolen, maybe? They just grabbed it and ran out of the store while the alarm was going off. I don't know. But like the, these ten, look how big this 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 is a ten. Okay? Everybody you know, we we know what steel books look like. We know what the digi books look like. We know what the steel packs look like. This was a ten. Look at that. Look at that. Opens like so. Oh goodness gracious. You've got a little card inside with the chapters on it. And the disc came in like a CD case. But, and that one's shaped like Joe Spinell's head. How freaking cool is that? How freaking cool is that? Uh, but yeah, this is the soundtrack, <laughs> and there's the uh, there's the movie on DVD. And there's the inside with nothing in it. And some of the best poster art ever, ever. 
Let's look and see what a Maniac Original One Sheet's going for on eBay. Uh, uh, that's not that's not the good one though. Uh, they've got a bunch of the edited ones. Oh whoa, twelve hundred bucks! Holy crap! Oh this and it's framed. You, take it out of the frame. I don't need the frame. That should save me a few bucks. Here's one from the UK for 755 bucks. Ugh. All right, back to the tins. Back to the tins. Uh Here we have Hellraiser. But it's not just Hellraiser. It's Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser together. Yeah, this is number 11,874 out of, I don't know how many were produced. But this one comes with pretty hefty booklet. Pretty hefty booklet there. Got two of the cards with the chapters and stuff on them. There's Hellbound. <clears throat> and here's Hellraiser. I like that they chose this poster art for for it, for the card. And here are the discs. I've not flipped through this book and got ages, ages and ages. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So Hellraiser. And Hellraiser 2, 10. All right, here we go. Kiss your nerves. Goodbye. Evil Dead 2. Look at that artwork. That is some pretty artwork. Number 28,746 of 5,000. <laughs> Coming fall 2000. Evil Dead, Hell to the King on PlayStation. I'm sorry, PlayStation 2. Is it PlayStation 2? Or just PlayStation? Dream, Sega Dreamcast, Windows 95, 98, and PlayStation. <clears throat> Here's the book, another another big thick booklet. There's the crew. And the chapters card. Oh, and here are, well, here's the disc. Anybody play? Did anybody ever play Evil Dead, Hell to the King? That Evil Dead is for PS1? Okay. Level promo cards like that. Don't have the Highlander. No. Don't have the Highlander one. Uh, 
Isn't the tens the same as steel books? No, 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 no. The tens are much bigger, much thicker. Um, just, just you know, I don't know, just kind of more, just more special. And but not they're they're not easy to display. That's for sure. Because I mean they're they're big. They take up a lot of space. And I mean it's just you know, they're they're a little unwieldy, but. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. It's not very good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm, the the video game is not very good. Uh, okay, more tens. More tens. How about a non horror ten? Repo man. Uh, Twenty eight thousand one hundred ninety four of thirty thousand. Any Repo Man fans out there? And I mean, very, very creative Repo Man booklet. That's all it says. Repo Man booklet. That's it. That's all you need to know. Repo Man. There's the disc. And it comes with the soundtrack. Any Repo Man fans out there? <clears throat> All right, I'm going to show this one just to make Garrett jealous. Let sleeping corpses lie. AKA, um, the living dead. At Manchester Morgue. Love this movie. Great, great movie. If you've not seen it, highly recommend it. Love this artwork. Uh, only 5,000 produced. And I've got number 963 out of 5,000. Oh, <laughs> I forgot this came with it. A toe tag from the Manchester Morgue. I forgot about that. Oh my God. Manchester morgue office of the medical examiner toe tag. How freaking cool is that? How freaking cool is that? <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, darn. The booklet. The uh, chapters card and they threw something else in too. Here is the disc. Garrett, if you're interested, make me an offer. Um, just make me an offer. Great movie. Great, great movie. Some Lucio Fulci love here. The Beyond. <clears throat> oh crap, I left the toe tag out. I gotta put the put the toe tag back in there. Uh this is not, twenty thousand. I've got nine thousand forty five out of twenty thousand. Oh man, this is a it's a big booklet for this one. Ah, uh, there he is. 
There he is, Mr. Fulci. Got multiple cards inside this one. Here's the chapter card. And here is the disc. And we have two discs. A lot of Fulci on this one. Really nice steel book. Steel book, 10. It's a 10. It's not a steel book. <sighs> Let's see. I can smell the old FYE watching this. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is in really good condition. It doesn't have any dings or anything. It's in really good condition. <clears throat> Just watched Repo Man for the first time last month. Cool. Got some love for Repo Man in the chats. Evil Dead Hell to the King sucked. <laughs> These are classics when it comes to Anchor Bay Steel Books. You probably already know what these are. Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. Steel but tens, tens, tens. Yes, these are Halloween 4 and 5 Anchor Bay tens. Uh, 15,000 copies of part five were produced. I've got 13,330. 40,000 copies of part four were produced of which I have number 8,952. <clears throat> There's the disc. Does anybody remember what these retailed for? When they were first released? Anybody remember? There's the back of Halloween 5. This one's on here. Good. There we go. Halloween 5, we got a booklet. Got a card, the, the chapter selection card. <clears throat> and there's the disc. So spitzy. I want to see an image of Dr. Loomis beating Michael with that two by four. Come on, that's got to be in here somewhere. It's got to be in here somewhere. Oh, well, there's Dr. Loomis getting all bloodied up. Twenty nine ninety nine maybe. Could be like thirty nine ninety nine. 
Yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. That that sounds about right. <clears throat> I think that's the photo I got Don Shanks to sign for me when I met him at Halloween 45. It was him with the Sith or the Scythe or whatever. So there you go. There were my favorite Anchor Bay releases. Fachi Cinema, how you doing tonight, sir? So yeah, Anchor Bay. What a... They were way ahead of their time. A lot of great releases. You know, we wouldn't have the boutiques today without them, I don't think. Ah, what's up, Dominic? How you doing? Hey, Justin, cool stream. See you in Nashville. Not sure the coolness of Anchor Bay will ever be captured again. Those were all the first, first time most of those titles were released. So it was a big deal. Yes, indeed it was. Very big deal. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you in uh, in Nashville. Yeah, it's going to be a fun show. Now they've all been released a dozen. I know. Yeah, it's true. Very true. <clears throat> Let's see. What else is going on in the chats? You met Spitz at 45, the same personality like in the movie. That's cool. Don't have the Mario Bava box set. Um, I have a reanimator. Uh, it's a DVD, like double disc somewhere. I know I own it. I, it's somewhere around here, but I have that one. Think of the new haircut. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Appreciate that. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, um, yeah, pretty much a nineties kid. Yeah. So. But there's, it's quite a time to be alive, the late 90s, early 2000s. If you were a horror fan or if you were into physical media or collecting, I mean, also, I mean, I mean, think about it, too, from a, a collector's perspective. I mean, like NECA, the, um, the, the McFarlane figures, Leatherface and Myers and Jason and all those were coming out around that time, too. So, I mean, it was... Uh, it was a great time to be a horror fan and just a collector. What's up, Aaron? How you doing? No, Phantasm didn't get a 10. Yeah, it should have. They should have gave Phantasm a 10. It's a missed opportunity. Uh, I have the main, I, I just showed off the maniac 10, but I'll show it off again. Since you, you got here a little late. Let's see. What, here, here it is. <clears throat> got maniac. Don't have uh, Heathers though. We nineties kids actually hate the nineties and loved everything from the eighties. <laughs> I didn't hate, I didn't hate everything from the nineties. I didn't No, I didn't hate, um, I love the nineties. I mean, we had grunge music at the beginning of the nineties and then we had new metal at the end of the nineties and we had the resurgence of, of horror halfway through too. I mean, you know, it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, 
Um, I've got the near dark. I've got that. I've got that around here somewhere too. Um, that was a really good release when it first came out that near dark DVD. And <laughs> I've got a midnight hour, uh, bootleg. I've got the bootleg. Oh, oh, oh. Speaking of out of print titles. I almost forgot about Cheerleader Camp. <laughs> so this is a movie that is, from what I was told, whatever the issues are with this movie, why it's not ever made the jump from any other format except for this, Oh, and, and VHS, of course. Um, it's like I was told it's hopeless. Like this will never get a release. Like a Blu-ray. Never. What the issues are, I have no idea. I didn't ask. But I was just told it's hopeless. I, I was told we'll get a midnight hour release long before we get a new cheerleader camp. Which is sad. <clears throat> Let's see how much uh, the Midnight Hour DVD is going for. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Holy Lord. I'm going to have to share screen on this one. Sweet Jeebus. Sweet Jeebus. $899.99. Wow. Plus 688 shipping. Because look, he, he, you're not getting free shipping on a $900 DVD. Not happening. Here's one from Canada for $237. i am surprised there aren't a million bootlegs. Why aren't there a million bootlegs on here? All right. I'm going to make, he, he, did, he has left it open for offers. Let's make him an offer, shall we? What do you think is a, what do you think is a, a is this brand new? Is this thing never, hold on. Is it brand, it's brand new. Is this a bootleg? Is this guy trying to sell a bootleg? What's a reasonable, um, what's a reasonable offer? You sent them a 1099 offer? I mean, $55, six, oh, six sixty six. All right, I'm going to send them a 666 offer. $6.66. And in the in the message I'm going to write Hail Satan. And let's put the emo the devil horn emojis in there too. Let's put 6 of them. So he knows I'm I mean business. Oh, he declined. That's, that's as high as I'm going to go. That's as high as I'm going to go. I mean, he had a sale there, but... You know? He had a sale there. Oh, well. His loss his loss <sighs> and I, I've got a bootleg anyway I'm fine with the bootleg so 35 is reasonable oh good luck I mean good luck to him good luck to him somebody 
may pay that much for it. I don't know. Let's see how much Cheerleader Camp is going for. Maybe I can put my Cheerleader Camp DVD up. It's like collateral or something for it. Uh, thirty-one dollars. That's yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Anyway. Tonight was fun, going back and talking about Anchor Bay. Um, they really were ahead of their time, and uh, they gave us th they did they did so much for the horror genre and for horror fans back in the day. Um, <clears throat> yeah but this has been fun and very nostalgic a very nostalgic walk down memory lane of um i mean really it was it was it was an incredible time to be a horror fan and to be a collector because it, Anchor Bay certainly broadened my horizons when it came to horror. Without them, you know, it would have been many years later before I saw probably <laughs> any of the Argento stuff or the Fulci stuff or, you know, any of that great Italian exploitation cinema that they brought to the forefront. So... quite a time quite a time so i'm gonna do some shout outs here and then we will call it a night uh let's see shout out to astro juicy for hanging out with us over on twitch thank you sir hanging out with us over on twitch shout out to hymns are beautiful for the five dollar and two two dollar super chats Shout out to Orc for 18 months of being a channel member. I appreciate that. Shout out to Hymns Are Beautiful for becoming a channel member. Very kind of you. And to Horror Huami. I hope I pronounced your last name correct. Or if that is your last what it I hope I pronounced that correct. Uh, for becoming a channel member also. Thank you very much. We've got 99 likes on the stream. Can we get to 100 before we call it a night? Can we get to 100? Just need one. Just need one. One more lock. Can we do it? Yes. Very fun. Very fun. Thanks for memories. You're welcome. You're welcome. Ken from Mid-Level Media said he's going to blind buy it for 900 I mean, that's a solid investment. Solid investment. Cheers to you, Johnny. Thank you for hanging out. Boom. Oh, oh, boom. Oh, thank you. 107 likes. Thank you all very much. Appreciate, appreciate that. Oh, can have a taco. All right, man. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Swaggy. All right, folks. Uh, thank you again for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you for the walk down memory lane and uh, for all the, the fun nostalgia vibes from tonight. So have a great rest of your Sunday night. Um, I will see you guys again very soon. I've got a um, couple of unboxing videos I'm going to be doing sometime this week. I've got um, at least one or two videos, I'm, uh, new taste test videos I'm going to be doing with Jeremy. Uh, I'm going to at least try and get one in this week. Got some reviews coming. Uh, and like I said, I'm, I'm chasing after three different people for Bloodstreams. So... 
hopefully I'll be able to announce something there very soon. So, but yes, thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you again very soon. Take care, be safe. And until next time, peace. Thank you.